Hey guys, John here. Um, it's another episode of Vault of the Dungeon Master, and this is a video response to PhD and D's video on playing with uh, player character perception. Uh, this is a very, very interesting video, I thought, and, I, and PhD and D brought up some really great points as he always does, and I just thought I'd, I'd weigh in on it, and um, I'll leave a link to that video in the description or doobly-doo or whatever these kids are calling it these days. Um, you know, yeah, um, PhD goes into, like, playing with, like, characters, like, um, he, he makes a reference to, like, a fourth edition, how, like, monsters can dominate players, player characters, and how, um, if that player gets dominated as a DM, you shouldn't tell them that they are dominated, and, um, you should wait till they go to make an attack and then say they're attacking their allies. To that, I, I do agree. That's a very good method. That's a very good idea, and that does make it fun. That adds something, because the players don't really know if they're dominant. Um, now, you can allude to things as a DM. You know, you can allude to things. You know, like, you don't feel, your, like you don't feel yourself. You, you don't feel as yourself. And um, that's cool, too. But I really do like how P, what PhD and was saying. Um, I did um, something very similar like this recently in my Thieves Guild campaign, where my one player is, was playing a character that he's played for pretty much four years in, in my gaming since he started. And this character has a very rich background, and a rich background that I helped develop as a DM, and even as a player character, because he played the character a lot. Um, and so I had it where he was kind of estranged from his world, and he's kind of sorting out his past, and um, there's things that are popping up that are very different, like an old ally is now a villain of his, and it's just a lot of cool stuff going on. And and I'm kind of I've screwed up with his perception a bit, and how I did that was, you know, I did well. He doesn't remember quite things of his memory and stuff, and it was very cool. Um, Granted, I took a lot of it from uh, Bioshock Infinite, because uh, that's a great game, and it has a great storytelling device in it with that. And, um, but yeah, it, he wasn't expecting things. He wasn't expecting how things go. He doesn't still know, and he probably will never know things that I have planned for him. But, yeah, that's one of the examples where I've played with players' perceptions. I also, I've made players paranoid. Um, my infamous save versus grass encounter, where they fought grass, the players around the table, the rest of the game, they were paranoid the fuck, pardon my language, out of everything, that came, like, they came across, like, a, like a pool of water, they didn't want to go in it. They were trying to attack the water. It was very funny. And that's kind of how I've taken... Yeah, it was, that was very funny. And that's how I've taken the idea of playing with players' perception. I do do it occasionally with, like, you don't feel yourself. Like, I've done it with, um... Oh, when I ran one, when I ran the Dragonlance modules a couple months back, um... My one friend playing Riceland... Yeah, um, cash charm person, and uh, on one person, he was trying to find, he was trying to find something, a cash charm person, he didn't know, he didn't go up to know if it was to work, so, you know, it's like, yeah, you, and I said to him, he cast a spell, but however, when it came to, when it came to, he was trying to actually use them as an ally, the person didn't answer him, because the spell actually failed, the character made it safe. So that was cool. That was a cool way of playing with the player and playing with the characters. And it's it does set up an interesting dynamic. I do agree with PhD and D and I do recommend that you got that you guys as new DMs, old DMs do try to challenge your players in that respect. You know, in, indulge yourselves in kind of the strange kind of ways of making characters unique and unique ways, like if someone has a backstory, oh, I mean, another example of this, I said to one one character, she, um, 
my, my one player that's playing. She, she's a very good role player. She's one of the best in my group. Um, so I, uh, I read her backstory, and see, she would wind up with someone. She, she saw someone that looks familiar from her past, and she was avoiding that person. And um, so to, to the point where she's trying to corral people away from him and like run into buildings. It was all very cool and very cool. It was all very cool and it really set role playing. Now, the player knew, she knew what I was doing. In fact, I kind of, we had discussions about what, uh, how, where I want to take characters because, and um, she kind of knew what I was doing metagaming, but she role played it, which is great. Um, it's another very good thing for players. When a DM is trying to do that to you, when a DM is trying to kind of skew your perception a bit, don't try to fight him. Go with it. Go, go see what's happening. Because the DM's not going to try to kill you out. Because one, that's not fun. You're more used to us alive than dead. Unless it's called Cthulhu, then you're all fucking dead. But, part my language again. But yeah. Anyway, yeah. Go DMs, go out there, challenge your players, play with their play with their characters' perception, make your games memorable. You know, with everything that I've discussed with here and discussed with people in communities, from what I've seen, make your games special, make them unique, make them challenge your players, and make them indulgent topics or have like aspects to them that are very. You wouldn't expect a typical fantasy game. Um, example, my whole Bioshock Infinite spiel I gave with this one character. That's just something fun, and it's just something good, and it adds something to the game. It makes the game more than just hack and slash dungeon crawl. Or going to save the princess. Which, by the way, I don't know if everybody had answered that. Has anybody ever done the save the princess questline for a campaign? Anyway, that's a tangent for another video. Um... But yeah, anyway, go out there, challenge your players, make your games unique, and also, in honor that it's the second day of the best four days in gaming, happy Gen Con, y'all.